hoes in this house. There's some hoes in this house. There's some hoes in this house. what are you doing? I didn't say we're gonna tick tock. We're gonna talk tech. Talk tech. Talk tech. Hey guys, thanks for joining us here at BZB Express TV today. Um, this is Steve, our technical support engineer. Howdy folks. Uh, you know, recently in the tech support department, we've been fielding a lot of calls from people. Uh, they've got a lot of questions about uh, IP cameras, live streaming, what sort of devices do I need to make that happen, and uh, we're here to address that. Yeah, in the wake of the new social distancing rules, uh, houses of worship have been left scrambling to figure out how to broadcast their content. Uh, businesses are attempting to plow ahead by working from home uh, and school systems have been forced obviously as many parents know to adapt to the uh, distance learning. Yeah, we received so many questions about this that we actually decided we were going to do one video we decided we need to make two uh, just so that way we can kind of condense information a little bit without rambling on too long but uh, get you all the info you need about uh, how to proceed. Yeah, basically I just want to help you out here with some of the simple questions we get on a daily basis. Uh, first most obvious question is, uh, what are my options for streaming my content and what devices are required? So in other words, do you need something other than a camera? What's the cabling? So forth. Um, people are just confused also whether they need a software or program or whether they can stream directly from a camera. So we're going to answer some of these questions. So uh, we'll kind of start off talking about uh, different camera types. So your most basic type of camera is just going to be your good old-fashioned web camera. A lot of you may already have these. Uh, you got things like that, like these here. They have a lot of different options. They're actually at a point where they've got pretty nice quality. You can get 4K. Uh, they're super easy. You basically plug it in via USB to your computer, fire up whatever live streaming app you're using, be it uh, OBS Studio, vMix, Skype, Zoom. YouTube, Facebook Live, any of those things. Um, they work pretty awesome for a basic type of setup uh, for you know meetings, that kind of thing. And then uh, when you get beyond that, then you're getting a little more into the PTZ cameras, which Chris will tell you about a little bit. Um, so the PTZ cameras, standing for pan, tilt, and zoom, uh, typically offer a couple different types of connections. In the instance of this one, the BGU PTZ series, we actually offer an SDI connection, a USB 3.0 connection, an HDMI connection, and the LAN connection. So as you can see, you're pretty well covered. Typically using an SDI uh, output, you would use a coax cable. It's a special HD rated SDI cable that goes 75 ohms. This allows people to put this camera, say, at a distance up to 330 feet away and relatively inexpensive to run that cable. It locks in position, nice and solid. Uh, used most commonly for professional applications. Um, obviously HDMI, we're all familiar with HDMI. Uh, problem is it's got a limitation, typically of about 25, 30 feet. They say 50, but I don't really buy that usually. Don't believe the hype. No, and even the active cables can be problematic. So you're gonna wanna use an HDMI extender over Cat5 or Cat6 to really get a good signal uh, from a distance. Uh, the other option, as we mentioned with the conference cameras, is the USB 3.0. The USB 3.0 is great, however, it's also got distance limitations. Uh, extenders, they do offer, but they're really expensive. So if you're gonna use USB 3.0, you're typically gonna be closer to your computer um, or where it needs to plug in. 15 foot is typically the distance limitations. Um, there are active cables you can go, I believe it's 10 meters, uh, 20 meters. Again, you run into some issues periodically, but for the most part, they work pretty good. Uh, another uh, type of camera that we're going to talk about is NDI. You may or may not have heard of NDI, but uh, it's an IP streaming protocol. It's really cool. It allows you to get your full image. Uh, it's got a great compression algorithm to it where you don't lose a lot of video quality. Uh, it allows control over that same signal. Auto discovery makes it very, very easy to use. And uh, you're typically using about 20 to 30 megabits a second of bandwidth for one of those guys versus standard uh, NDI, which can be as much as 50 or more and uh, could really bog down your network. So these are a great, great new way to do things. Essentially, it's eliminating the connections I just spoke of, the SDI, the HDMI. Um, all you're going to need is a LAN cable, a Cat5 or Cat6. 
And these cameras uh, for this specific model are PoE, so you don't even need power. You run a simple Cat5, Cat6 there. Uh, typically, you're going to use like a software platform called OBS Studio or vMix or ProPresenter, and they have the ability to capture that video from your local area network and stream it just amazingly. So really cool technology. It's taking off. We offer NDI HX, which is even a, a better rate of compression, typically up to 30 megabits per second. Um, that way, as Steve mentioned, it doesn't completely bog your network down. Also worth mentioning with those guys is that they do have a lot of free tools available on yeah. the New Tech website. Uh, really cool ways to kind of tweak out and operate your cameras. So definitely worth considering if you're looking for a little bit more polish in the presentations that you're making. And speaking of control, um, obviously, as he mentions, there's controls you can use uh, through the NDI tools. Typically, PTZ cameras come with web GUIs, so that's an IP address associated with the camera. It allows you to go to a preview screen, which also gives you pan, tilt, zoom, and presets, and even control of the speed for the, um, the pan, tilt, and zooming, which is really convenient along with the preview window. Um, however, there are other methods. Uh, our preferred method that uh, we recommend everybody use is a joystick controller. Uh, if you're using a single camera, a lot of times uh, the web GUI will work all right. But when you're getting multiple angles, multiple cameras, you really need one of these guys. It makes it very easy. You get nice, precise control via the joystick. Uh, you can adjust your zoom levels and you can, more importantly, record presets to these number keys here. And basically you record a camera angle, uh, focus setting, and store it to that button and you simply hit that button and the camera will snap straight to that shot and you can record multiple presets in there and uh, if you got a couple of cameras makes it child's play to, like to deal with all that controller it's like it is a lot um, as well as the setup we offer videos on bzb express tv on how to set up joystick controllers literally takes maybe five minutes and you're up and running however if you don't have the budget for a joystick controller or it's just not in the overall um, scheme of things you can use the remote these cameras come with remote controls. Um, they're IR, which means infrared. They go up to about 30 feet or so. Um, Downside so, to those is they do get lost in the couch. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, besides the remote though, we're excited to uh, let you know we will be releasing our uh, app. So we have a, a PTZ app that will be released any day now. And that's also gonna be able to control our cameras. Uh, super friendly, super cool. It's even got presets on it and speed control. Yeah, one nice feature that we're working on with that app is uh, when you bookmark or uh, store a preset, you actually get a little snapshot of that camera angle. So you can really quickly just cruise through and see exactly the shot you're looking for, call it up. It should be really great and uh, it's coming soon. You know, and another uh, question I get a lot in sales that I deal with um, is Zoom. You know, what Zoom do you need? Steve can help clarify that a little bit. So uh, when you're dealing with Zoom, uh, there's a few rules of thumb. Uh, basically, if you're from 10 to 30 feet away, you could probably get away with a 10x zoom camera. If you're less than 10 feet, zoom's not really an issue. You can just go with any old camera. Uh, you might actually do a lot better with a not zooming camera because they'll have a little bit wider angle. Uh, a high zoom camera at close range is going to crop your image and not give you a good result. Uh, when you're in the 30 to 50 foot range, you're going to be looking at a 20x camera. And uh, when you get 50, 75 feet away, 30X is going to be definitely what you're looking for because that's going to still allow you to zoom in and get that nice tight shot uh, so you're not just looking at a bunch of unnecessary crud on the outside of your picture. Yeah, and when you're using a 30X zoom, um, you're going to want to consider the SDI cabling that I spoke of earlier or the NDI technology just because it's such a hassle to get a HDMI or a video cable from some corner far away all the way over there because obviously if you're using 30x you got probably a 50 to 75 foot shot so simplify things get an ndi make your life um, easy yeah makes life <laughs> a lot easier especially if you're using a software platform now uh, when you get into zoom levels another thing that you'll run into a lot are lighting issues when you get really far away from something let's say you've got a window and there's a beam of light coming right through the middle it can really mess with the the camera shot so Fortunately, most of these cameras have a lot of built-in settings for exposure, shutter speed, contrast and brightness, backlight control, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so really it lets you get in there and dial in the picture and get something usable even in a challenging situation. And uh, there's also a few tricks with the focus that uh, Chris will tell you about. Yeah, so um, a question that I had from a customer once is uh, he was basically trying to use his camera to 
shoot a statue and the background behind that was really dark the sunlight was hitting the statue just right <laughs> the statue i remember yeah. it yeah however it's like the autofocus it, it tends to kind of not know where it should be focusing on it does a little stuttering if you would um, so what we were able to figure out is that you can actually manually focus on the object giving yourself a crystal clear picture and you can set that as a preset so the preset will actually automatically remember that manual focus shot, even if you go off to another shot that happens to be an autofocus. When you press that number one, say that's where you set your preset, it goes right back to that manual focus shot, and thus your little auto issue with the uh, back and forth situation is gone. And uh, with regards to that statue, nothing personal if you're watching, but it wasn't that good of a statue, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty cool, actually. I thought it was cool. We have a different opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> but mine, mine's the one that counts. <laughs> so other than that, you know, um, we hope we covered a lot of the uh, questions typically associated with these cameras, whether it be a conference, whether it be a PTZ live streaming camera. Um, next video, we'd like to cover some video switchers, audio switchers. We're going to talk about capture devices. Some cool uh, things like this guy. Yeah. Lots of buttons, yep. switches, knobs. I like it. Yeah, essentially for those of you especially looking to expand into more than say one camera, you got three or four cameras you want to tie into a, a, a shot or um, for a Sunday sermon or something, then you can use these video matrices. Um, that are going to help incorporate all that and then you're going to get it to a software platform. So we'll discuss more of that in the next video. Please let us know if you got any questions regarding this video um, or the video we'll be making next week. Uh, that way we can help answer them for you. Uh, thanks for watching guys. We hope this was helpful and uh, we will see you next time.